Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 of our design system series. In episode 1 we looked at creating color tokens for our design system and in episode 2 we looked at typography scale. Today we're going to look at how to utilize numbers in our variables and create sizing tokens for border radiuses, spacing, padding, all of that. As usual you've got your Figma file in the description below so feel free to follow along. Let's jump in. So in the file, you will find this number scale, and this is the scale that we're gonna be working with. Now, obviously, as usual, if you wanna work with different kinds of scales, if you wanna work with the scales of threes or fifties or anything, go ahead. But I would really recommend to have this basic scale of twos, as I call it, in here, ready for you to use in your primitives. So this is the number scale we're gonna use, and it's going to range from three extra small until four extra large, and we're gonna have this 99 for full. The reason for having this 99 is you want to have that one extreme number which will basically help you the most with radius because it can create a full circle for you. So let's start off with doing that. If I click on nothing, so just clicking on my canvas and going to local variables, because we are working on the same file that we've done for episode one and two, I already have some semantic colors here, some style tokens and some primitives. So in the primitives collection, I've got my colors here and I want to group them. Great. So now that they're grouped in this way, I want to create a new primitives, which will be my number scale. So just click on your all variables and create a number variable. And in order to create that first grouping, I'm going to call it number scale, then twos, because this is going to be my scale of twos. And then let's start with our first one. So three XS. So by doing all of those slashes, I basically created those groupings for myself. So now I have the variable three XS. It lives inside of the group that's called twos inside of the group that's called number scale. If I go to all variables, I can see it just here at the bottom as well. So now I'm just going to copy whatever's here. So three XS is going to be two new number variable. 2xs is going to be 4, xs is going to be 6, and then my last one, you can call it whatever you want, I like calling it full, and I'm actually going to make it 999, so 999. So I've got my number scale here inside of primitives, great. Now I did put it inside of a group called 2s because maybe one day I'll want to have another primitives that's a scale of 50s or a scale of 10s or anything like that, so it's good to have them grouped just just in case. Now I have these numbers, but what am I gonna use them for? So one of the greatest things about variables is the fact that we can reference different variables and that's called using an alias. For example, in my designs, I have three kinds of corner radiuses. I wanna use a two, a four and a six. Then yeah, I could just use these ones, right? I can have a square in my design and then inside of quarter radius, I can just call on two, yeah? but. What we can do with variables, we can create a second collection called, let's say, tokens. And inside of it, we can create a group called radius. And then we can call out to these primitive values from there. And then when we're looking for a variable over here, we're not just going to be presented with an endless array of numbers. We will just be able to look for radius small, radius medium, radius large. So it's already there ready for us. So let's build that now. If you scroll a bit to the right, you'll have the radius ready to go. So let's say in my designs, I have an option to have an extra small radius, small radius, medium, large, extra large, and a full, so that like circle design. So I'm going to create a new collection for this. I know we already have a collection called style tokens from before, but this is sizing tokens and you'll see why I'm making a different one in a second. So I'm gonna create a new collection. I'll call it sizing tokens. And I'll create my first variable. So this one is a number variable and I'll just call it radius slash extra small. Again, using that slash to create a group. With this, I'm gonna create all my variables first and then use them so we can see it happen live. And then I'll assign these just so we can see it happening in kind of real time. So my extra small square, I'm gonna assign it to XS. My small one, I'll connect it to small. This one I'll connect to radius medium. This one I'll connect to radius large. This one I'll connect to radius XL. And the last one I'll connect to radius full. Now let's just select which values we want and then we can see it happening live. Cause right now all of these are set to zero, right? Because all the variables are set to zero. So for extra small, let's select one of the variables from my number scale. So I probably want this one to be 
just move my number scale into here so we can see it while we work. I probably want the extra small to be about two, right? Because it is an extra small. So I'll use that one and you can see it happening straight away. Now this one is two. Let's see, small would probably be a four then. So this one's a four. So for medium, I wanna use eight. Then for large, I probably wanna use a 12, which is a medium. So let's find a medium over here. For the extra large, I probably want the biggest one you can do to be 16, which is a large. So let's select large over here. And you can see that scale. And because you're seeing it happening in real time, you can see if these jumps are okay for you or maybe they're too jarring, but I think, I think they're okay. Um, yeah, and then full, we're just gonna use full. So full all the way down here, and that will give us a circle because 999 is quite a big number. So unless our element is really huge, 999 will probably create a circle or a pill shape uh, on any kind of element on your page. So that is now ready for us to go. And if we want, we could do the same thing for padding, for spacing, anything like that. For me, I know that later when I'm creating my components, I rather create the tokens per component kind of to have it match the component rather than a general, this is my spacing always, this is my padding always. But for your designs, you might need that. One more thing I wanna show you. Do you remember when we were applying this radius? So I'll just show you again. I'm gonna drop in a square, just clicks on R. If I try and apply a variable now, when I click on the variables button, you can see that I can see all of my primitives and my radius. But now that I've set up these radius tokens, I don't want whoever's using this file to be able to use just any number of the number scale, right? I've said to them, these are the only ones you can use. You can't use anything from here. So Figma gave us a way to block this basically using scoping. If I go into my primitives and select my number scale, if you go to this little edit button next to the variable, you will see that there's number scoping over here. And that's basically telling us what I can use this number for. So in our case, really, we don't want the user to ever be able to select primitive. We're going to create tokens for anything that they need. And that's the same with the colors as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove it from everything because I don't want anyone to be able to use my primitives. I will always give them that second level and they will use that second level rather than go deep down into this selection. So I'm going to go one by one and just remove all of this. Also Figma, if anyone is listening, if you will allow us to do this all at once, that would be great. But for now, one by one it is. Now, because I did that, and again, a lot of times people ask, what's the difference between styles and variables and why do we even need them? I know this one is numbers and we didn't have styles for numbers, but you get the point. Now, when I select this rectangle and go into select a variable for my radius, you can see that I can only see the variables that are appropriate for radius. I can't select deep down into the primitives anymore. I only see the appropriate one. In this first release of variables, we can only use scoping on number variables. It does appear inside of color variables, but it's says coming soon next to it and it says that when it's launched your choice will be kind of applied so don't trust it as of the time that this video is out maybe when you are watching it in the future it's already out and ready to go so good for you um but for now we can use it just on numbers and it's actually so useful so make sure to use it to block the user's ability like we said. And that was our quick episode three on our design system series. In the next episode, we're gonna look at effects that we're gonna wanna have as part of our design system. So make sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell button so you will be notified when that video is out. I hope you're enjoying. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're getting on. See you at the next one.